For climbers, there is Everest. For underwater explorers, the Titanic. For surfers, the North Shore. For drivers, there's the Nürburgring. Every turn at the ring has its own name. It's said that it takes a hundred laps around the Nürburgring just to learn where they all are. But to master them, that takes considerably longer. So the whole track, because it's so long, more than 20 kilometers, is hard to drive because you have to recognize every single corner and everything looks the same in the forest. The Nürburgring is so long and covers such a variety of terrain that it's possible for a driver to experience two or three seasons of weather in a single lap. On many evenings and weekends, the ring is opened up to anyone with 16 euros, a street legal car, and the courage to drive it. New exotic sports cars, old econo boxes, motorcycles, and scooters all line up for a turn. This is wild. It's beyond imagination. So I just went sideways and then backwards and then got very, very, very close to the uh, side of the track, but too close. So where were you on the ring? The second corner. Oh, so right <laughs> away. Just lost it badly. We just went for a ride with uh, Dirk. Dirk took me uh, one time around the ring. Used every muscle in my body just to be sitting still in the back seat of the car. Just tossed around like a rag doll. Ozzy pulled out all the stops on this one. We left the Corvette standing. It was kind of embarrassing. We felt bad for it. What's your fascination with the trail? Uh, the need for speed, the old cliche. Keep on to go faster. I mean, I just love driving. I mean, I'm, I'm a petrol head through and through and through. It's just funny to see the other guys, you know. Sometimes they have a bicycle on the roof 
So the whole family is in the car, including dog, and just to watch the people, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. A lot of people here for the history. You see there's a lot of people just standing around, not really going on the trucks. There's a lot of history behind the truck. How did the ring come about? For that, you have to go back over 80 years. After years of racing on public roads, by the 1920s, it was clear Germany and her car companies needed a permanent track to race and test their cars. The area around the town of Nürburgring in the Eiffel Mountains was chosen for its challenging terrain and to give the economically depressed area a boost. The ring was built from 1923 until 1927. At this time, you know, it was everything just forest. The people didn't have a job here, and so they have built something where 4,800 people was building the ring for four years, and they have had a job for it. Es soll ja, der Stein soll ja die Tradition des Nürburgrings etwas rausstellen. Mein Vater hat also eine kleine Werkstatt hier in Nürburgring gehabt. Die wurde dann später zu einer BMW-Vertretung. Er ist sehr bekannt geworden durch die BMW 700er Autos. Also wir sehen hier eingemeißelt, das soll darstellen, das Formel 1 BMW Auto und da Nelson Piquet, wo er 83 Weltmeister geworden ist. During the Ring's glory days as a Grand Prix circuit, Sterling Moss, Phil Hill, Jackie Stewart, and Emerson Fittipaldi all raced here in front of crowds that numbered in the hundreds of thousands. By the 1960s, however, engines had grown bigger and the cars faster. Many drivers felt the twisting, narrow track of the ring was just too dangerous. Jackie Stewart dubbed it the Green Hell. Despite attempts to make it safer, after a number of accidents, including the fiery crash of Niki Lauda in 1976, the ring's days as a Grand Prix circuit were over. There we are. That is Sterling was. He was the first one to have signed here. Here we have got the corner from Michael Schumacher. And over there is Stuck, you know, the famous German driver, actually. And Stuck, over there. Mein Opa hat das gebaut, die seit 1929 hier an diesem Ort besteht. Und ja, eine Story hier vom Nürburgring ist, ich glaube, es war 1972. Da waren hier äh, Testfahrten für Formel 1. Direkt hier gegenüber hörte ich, dass ein Formel 1 Wagen stehen blieb. Ich bin dann dort hochgelaufen hinter diese Büsche und ich sah dann, dass es Emerson Fittipaldi war. Weltmeister von damals. Ja? Und er hatte kein Benzin mehr. Ich habe dann einen Benzinkanister geholt, mein Fotoapparat und bin dann zu ihm hochgelaufen. Und wir haben dann den Lotus betankt und er ist wieder eingestiegen und ist dann auch wieder weitergefahren. Ich glaube, sein Manager, Domingos Piedada, hat den Sprint später hier an der Tankstelle bezahlt. Ich hätte nichts haben wollen. Over the 80 years of the Rings history, BMW has set many records. One of the most impressive came in 1966, when Hubert Hanna became the first touring car driver to lap the ring in less than 10 minutes in a BMW 2000 Ti. Another record was set in 1998. Hans Stuck, a BMW racer since the 70s, and his teammates piloted the first diesel-powered car to ever win a 24-hour race. Thanks to the superior performance of their BMW 320D and the fact that they didn't have to refuel as often as gasoline-powered cars, they ended the race with a six-lap lead over the nearest competitor. Ever since, efficient diesel-powered cars have been some of BMW's biggest sellers in Europe. The Nürburgring is often said to separate the men from the boys. However, one woman drives it better than anyone else. Her name is Sabine Schmitz, and no one knows this place as well as she does. 
I did on the Nordschleife more than 19, close to 20,000 laps. We did the ring always with my dad and I was half a year old maybe. So it's like the way to school, you know. I know every single corner, so I never had to learn the track. Yeah, I went shopping sometimes with my grandma or my sister. We took my mom's BMW. She had a, a 325, quite quick. <laughs> Yeah, I'm racing since 18 years and I was quite successful here at the Nürburgring. I won twice a 24-hour race, the long distance championship in front of 420 men. We were quite disappointed. <laughs> it's the best test track here because the suspension has to work so hard. You have top speed corners and very long straight. You have everything you need and they say, Hey, 100 kilometers on a track are more than 100,000 kilometers on a normal road. If the ring is hard on drivers, it's murder on their cars. A set of new high-speed tires is shredded in two or three laps. Brake pedals retreat to the floor, and engines sometimes give up altogether. The entire life of a vehicle can be simulated in just a few weeks on the ring. track of the world, the fastest track, the longest track, and for sure the most uh, tricky track. <laughs> this heritage is uh, the reason why BMW comes here to test their cars. found it to be the perfect place to refine a car not just for racing but also for the real world. Other car companies have since come to the ring to test but BMW was the first to open a permanent testing center here. And they are still the only car company to subject every new car they make to the unique stresses of the ring. The Nürburgring you can call it the home or the birthplace of all BMWs. We believe that everything that excels here, excels everywhere. Normal racetrack in the world, it's about, let's say, 5 k's long. And this one here, it's over 20 k's long. The ring throws many, many forces at the cars. It covers some 900 feet of vertical elevation change. So the load of the car, the forces that the car has to deal with, they increase from one moment to the other in a very dramatic way. You have a lot of up and down hills, you have slow sections, you have quite fast sections. You have parts you will never find on another track in the world. The most unique feature of the Nürburgring is a 180 degree hairpin turn known as the carousel. With its steep 30 degrees of bank, the weight of a car literally doubles as it drives through this challenging section of the ring. By testing on the carousel, BMW has learned that every pound shaved off a car yields significantly better performance on the road. In fact, BMW considers testing at the ring so important they built a Nürburgring simulator so they can subject axles, wheels, and tires to the world's most grueling racing conditions 24 hours a day. The Nürburgring is pivotal to our company. Very glad and, and appreciative that we have this track. On this track we have a lot of situations from all over the world, very compressed in nearly 21 kilometers. In a single lap at the Nürburgring, you have so many different dynamic situations, smooth sections of asphalt, bumpy sections of asphalt, you have turns where you have the banking working for you, you have turns where the banking works against you. And we find that if we can make a car that does well here, we end up with a vehicle that both handles very well, but also rides very well. The ring has defined no cars as sharply as those from the BMW M division. The M1, M3, and M5 are just a few of the legendary cars born and bred on the ring. A performance car, like the M cars all are, has to comply with many different situations. Of course, it has to have a great engine, great brakes, great suspension, because this track is so demanding and what it throws at the cars. And only once it passes all our requirements here in terms of reliability and lap times, we'll call it an M car. 
One of the latest M cars developed on the Nürburgring is the new 500 horsepower M6. Race car driver Han Stuck recently got the chance to put the M6 through its paces on the German Autobahn. Okay, now I show you acceleration of M6. We are now third gear, about 84 miles, and now we go. Fourth gear, 105 miles per hour. 130 miles per hour, fifth gear. Sixth gear, 160, 163, 166, 170, 172, 3, 4, 5, 180 miles per hour. And then we go to seventh gear, to top gear. 185 miles per hour, 187, 188, 190 miles per hour, 92. 194, and now we have to slow down and see how fantastic those brakes are. <laughs> the latest BMW car to be perfected at the ring isn't a car at all. It's the completely redesigned BMW X5 sports activity vehicle. The X5 that everybody knows and loves, when it came into the marketplace, it really set new standards for the way a vehicle drives and handles, especially in the form factor in SUV, or as we call it, a sport activity vehicle. Thanks to its active safety features, such as intelligent dynamic stability control with rollover sensor and new run-flat tires, the new X5 not only makes for an exhilarating driving experience, it also makes for a safe one. The new X5 feels like a passenger car, a very great handling, like a sports car, a very good comfort, like a sedan. We decided we would make it a little bigger, so we seat seven now. The project manager cut his teeth designing race cars. We've worked together for many years on many different things, including racing programs. So when you look underneath the X5 and you see all those basically racing-inspired parts, understand why it handles so well, why it drives so well. The X5 has always had a reputation for performance. In 2001, Anstuck smashed the eight-minute mark in a specially prepared X5. The existing X5 took the world by storm when it came. When this X5 comes into the marketplace, we'll see the same thing. Last year for my birthday. 
and I'll probably get car sick, so I have bought these pills too. <laughs> that it uh, wasn't a slow drive. Well, you, you really don't have time to be afraid. You're, you're working on concentrating on keeping the contents of your breakfast down. For all those of you who hasn't tried this, you've got to do it. Amazing. She's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Amazing ride. Yeah. Best, best ride I've ever been on so far. You don't understand it until you've done it. It's unbelievable. I can't explain it. <laughs> Nothing like this in the world. Nothing. That's why we all come here. <laughs> 